Have you guys realized how exhausting and difficult and stressful it has become to shop in luxury shops? You go to Louis Vuitton, there's a queue outside. You got to wait 40 minutes to an hour before you're even allowed to enter. Sales associates ignore you. They're going to kind of jump over you to serve another customer that looks like they got more money. Um, it's become, you can't just enjoy, like you want to treat yourself for one thing. It doesn't have to be a big thing, maybe a cute little something little. You're out on the town and you want to enjoy a shopping experience in a luxury store. And then you enter and once the sales associate realizes you're not a big spender, they ignore you, they treat you poorly. You're at home, you try to do customer service, like you call the brand to ask like, hey, do you have this product in store? They don't know if they have the stock. Many a time they're gonna answer no, even though they have it. Or they're gonna tell you we have it, but we don't ship outside of the store because we don't know you, you haven't shopped with us yet. Returns are becoming harder and harder to do. You buy a product, you go back to return it for whatever flaw that the product had. The sales associates make you feel guilty. They like treat you like you're an idiot. You know, you come to the store and then they're like with a flawed piece and they're like, Madame or Monsieur, of course, this cannot be perfect. This is a luxury item. This is handcrafted. A lot of steps are made also by hand. It cannot be perfect. No two pieces are like, I'm like, listen, uh, you've been serving me that crap on a silver platter. Turns out the silver isn't real silver, but the crap is real. No, I ain't having it no more. So how many of you have been experiencing this more and more and more often? Because I have. And a lot of you have been writing me in the comments underneath my videos saying, Jacob, you know, it's like become so difficult for me to shop because of the queues. And then you don't know anybody working there. Nobody gives you the attention that you, everything has become like a quick supermarket. Everybody's very dismissive of you. Everybody just wants to quickly sell and go, get out of here. I got another client I got to serve. It's like, where's the luxury gone in luxury shopping? For the most part, it's gone, you guys. Uh, there is no more beautiful luxury shopping in luxury today. What is considered luxury today by the standards of the brands being so popular, it's not real luxury, you guys. Not anymore. But it's not all grim. I do have one solution to offer you in this video. Uh, it does take time. But then again, luxury does take time. All good things take a little bit of time. And this is a solution that I have for shopping in these luxury boutiques and shops. And this is how I personally deal with it. I'm going to share it with you. But First, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Jacob, all spelled together there as well for extra perks. I live stream every Saturday and midweek, and you're all invited to join me in the live chats. I got my co chators here with me right now. And um, let me share with you this uh, thing that I do. Telma says, yes, it's awful sno snobby associate, says Telma. Right, April? It's not luxury anymore. It's become like McDonald's. Mech luxury. That's a good one, April. Monarch says, yes, Jacob, the luxury is truly gone. It's sad. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Now, let me share with you my tip. And this takes a little bit of time because you have to uh, acknowledge the, the time you need to actually... Find a sales associate you like. Now, I've been shopping in the luxury sphere for many, many years. So I've built up relationships with certain, you know, uh, sales associates and stuff like that. But it's not immediate. It's like looking for the right shrink, you know, the right psychologist to go to, the right psychoanalyst. Like, it has to be a good match. Not every shrink is good for you. And you're not good for every shrink. It has to be a match. And I can tell you this, sales associates are not shrinks, but there has to be a vibe. And sometimes it takes several months, sometimes even years to find somebody who you click with. Once you have, and I have, 
not for every shop I shop in, but for most. It took me a while. But I went through the hassle. I went through the trenches, waiting in line, entering, being mistreated, not liking, you know, trying while you're in the boutique also to tell the sales associate, hey, sorry, this is not, not working for me. <laughs> like speed dating. Yes, I did that as well. Oh, my God. So a cute, quick story time before we get to the solution. I did in one of these boutiques once. The sales associate, they weren't a bad person. It's just they were dismissive in a in a French way, okay? But not like, ew, who are you? But just rather like, I'm busy. What do you need? You know, and I'm like, oh, okay, you're not giving me the time to think. <laughs> so I said, um, you know, I said to them, hey, you know, I'm sure you're a great person. <laughs> I gave I gave the breakup talk to a sales associate. I did. I gave the breakup talk to a sales associate once. And I said to them, I'm sure you're a great person and I'm sure you're lovely. But I, this is just not working for me. <laughs> I like I respect you. Like I get it. Like you're fine like but like I need like I need to <laughs> I need to find a better fit. They looked at me like I was crazy for a minute, like for a second. They were like, but then the funniest thing happened. They got that little smirk on their face, maybe because they're French and they get it. I don't know. And they made a little smirk. And they're like, oh, I totally get it. I'm like, listen, and nothing against you. It's all great. It's just that like, I think we have a different vibe. At the moment, you know, I'm a little bit more in my feeling my oats. Let me see the surroundings. And you're more in your let me finish my day of work and I got to go home. And I'm like, we're just not on the same page. And it's okay. I have nothing against you. But this is just not working for me. <laughs> and they kind of got it. And I kid you not, that honest interaction we had with each other. Because then when they kind of smiled and like were totally like, yeah, okay. It, it was a relief for them that I freed them, you know, that they could like kind of finish up their day and go, whatever. And it was a relief for me because then I could just like work with someone else. And then I encountered somebody fabulous. And once I encountered somebody fabulous, you get their number, not to harass them in their free time, be very, very weary of people's time, but... You text them when you want to come to the boutique. And this is the only way to do it nowadays because a lot of people are shopping for these products nowadays and, the sh and these boutiques are over flooded with people shopping. So it's really hard to get any sort of treatment other than being in a supermarket at this point. But my solution to this is make an appointment with the person that you know and that you somehow like. Okay, you got to like him at least a little bit. Make the appointment, write them and say, hey, I would really like to come by. I want to look at a couple of things. Um, you know, I have in mind a couple of things I want to buy. And uh, you can also send a list. Like, do you have these in stock? And if they say, yeah, yeah, we do. Then you're like, okay, well, when are you working next? I would come by. When I have time, when you have time. Then they tell you when. You make an appointment. That way, you don't have to wait sometimes at all in line to enter the boutique or shop, but sometimes you have to wait, but shorter, just a shorter while. It, because if you arrive, they already know this time slot that they've allocated you, but they might be still finishing off the client that was there before you. So you might have to still wait a little bit, but this saves you the time of waiting in line, right? I've noticed. So this is definitely, I do not go to Chanel ever without making an appointment first with my sales associate. Same with Louis. If I happen to have to be, you know, to go to Louis by accident without having the time to make an appointment, then I always have to stand in line. So I don't, I don't do it. I don't do it. Contact my sales associate and say, hey, when are you working next? These are the pieces I'm interested in. Then my sales associate answers and says, okay, this we have, we don't have, or we don't have any of these, but I could order one if you want. Uh, and then we kind of just debate when is the best time to come and not. And then, bam, we make an appointment and that's done. It saves you so much hassle and stress and time. But you need to make those appointments with the sales associate, not with the company. 
Because yes, you can also call Chanel customer service and say, I would like to come to the boutique. Can I make an appointment? They will make an appointment for you, but it's, you're going to get a random sales associate if you don't know anybody. And then good luck. You might get a, a good one for you, a good match or not a good match. But to have a better experience, I'm telling you, just be honest. Don't be rude. Don't pull a Karen on anybody, but be honest. You'd be surprised. Sometimes, yes, they will get maybe offended, but sometimes they will be really like cool with it. Like you tell them, hey, I think you're an awesome person, but I just don't think it's like working for me. <laughs> you know, you pull that whole Vanessa Hudgens uh, going to Coachella, even though like there's a pandemic happening type of thing. Um, there you go. Pao says, my current sales associate stole me from another and I like her better. Zubena, Zubena. And I'm telling you, sometimes it's just about the vibes. Just about the vibe. Um, honestly, just about the vibe. Crybaby Uzagi says, I started to shop at Hermes and went to pick up an online order in store and didn't vibe with the advisor. I went back again to get shoes and I got her again. Hopefully next time I get someone new. Yeah, try to get or just tell them, hey, honey, you're awesome. And we're just not like vibing. <laughs> exactly, Zane. You just tell them, it's not you, it's me. And remember, you guys, I told you I, I use this strategy as well. When I have to return a flawed good. Last time it happened to me was for the trifecta, the Louis Vuitton Kirigami pouches in monogram. Bought them, they packed them up, came back home, did the unboxing. As I was opening, you remember that video is still online on my channel. You can check it out. I'm looking at the Kirigami and I noticed that the biggest Kirigami, when they finish the stitch at the bottom corner of the bag, they, you know, they cut it and then they kind of melt it a little bit just so that it doesn't thread out. But whoever did it kind of pinched it too strong, melted through the canvas. Cha, it was really ratchet. And I showed you close-up pictures of it. Like, I have a whole video on that. Go check it out. And then I go back the next day to the boutique. And I already know that they're going to into the shop. And I know that Louis Vuitton is going to tell me, oh, but you know, we do by hand certain steps and it's normal. I'm like, no, 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 no. And of course, they try to tell me that. And then I said to them, I said, literally this, like, oh, it's me. It's, it's not you. It's me. I said to them, and I, and I explained this to you in that video. I explained to you how I did it. And I said... No, I know. I know they're made by hand. Parts of the product is made by hand. And I know you put a lot of love and effort in it. I know that each piece is unique. It's amazing. I love that for you. And that's awesome. But I'm just so, so sorry. I am just so OCD about these things. You see, I'm the problem. I, I'm just, you know, once I see this little tiny dot I cannot unsee it. And, and my OCD will drive me nuts because of this. So I'm really, really sorry. I apologize that I have to do this, but I, I, I cannot not do this. And then they, they, they zip it because they're like, okay, he's crazy. They're like, okay, fine. I'll get you a new one. And then they bring me a new one. I inspect it. And I'm like, okay, this is, we'll go, we'll go. And bam. And that's how I do it. So when I return a faulty item, that's their fault, faulty, not due to mishandling on my end. But when it's a factory, a fictre flaw, I pull that shtick on them. Like, I'm so sorry. It's me. It's not about you. Like, I'm very OCD about these things. I know it's so annoying. Probably you get like customers like me all the time. But like, seriously, I'm really, really sorry. And I become the one saying I'm sorry for their flaws. Psychology, baby. Play the game, play the game, and win the game. Bottom line, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Love you loads. And until next time, sabi, scribey, thummy uppy. See you soon. Bye. Mwah.